What's up, you guys? It's your Boy Scotty, and you're watching my Bad Girls Club 9 and R&B Divas review. The battery sign is back in on this damn camera, so I gotta get into it. I'm gonna have to talk as fast as I can so the battery will not die while I'm doing this video. So let me start off with the Bad Girls Club Mexico um, review. It starts off with Blondie and Andrea. They're having a heart-to-heart, -heart and they're talking about um, Blondie's um, struggles with her weight. And Andrea is basically giving her advice and letting her know that she once had issues with her thunder, with her thunder, thunder, ugh, this list, with her thunder, thunder thighs as well, you know, because, you know, she had her own issue with weight or whatever, and she was basically giving, um, Blondie so much needed advice and told her not to let the words of others bother her about her weight or whatever. Um... Zuli, um, I like Zuli. She kind of reminds me of another Christina in a way, but her constantly on this quest to turn Rima out is sickening. I mean, you already fucked her and Fallon in one night, and now you got your sights on Rima. It's like, it's kind of like Leah and Brandy all over again, but you know what I'm saying? It's like Zuli is way more aggressive with the situation. And I just don't know how this is going to play out. Like, she is too obsessed with Rima right now. Like, seriously. Um, you know, Zuli tells Andrea that she's jealous of um, Ricky J um, being all over um, Rima. So, Andrea decides to go over and flirt with um, Ricky J. So Zuli can get some time with Rima. Rima really didn't appreciate Andrea doing it. And you know, that's exactly what happened. So then they got back to the house. Ricky J's people comes over. And Andrea tried to explain to her what was going on in this mess. So as of right now, Andrea and Rima is okay for the most part. I mean, I guess the Ricky J shit really didn't get on my nerves. Um, Rima... Rima basically was like she came to Ricky J because she was jealous about seeing Ricky J and Andrea talking. Andrea obviously told Rima that Ricky J was trying to hook up with her or flirt with her on a sleek and Ricky J denied it. So of course Rima took it and ran with it and you know decided that you know she um, wasn't going to like Rima I guess. So then I guess the girls went out to eat or went out to a lounge or a club or something. I really don't know and they was about to pay for something. Andrea put down five dollars. So the girls are all pissed with her about putting down five books. And I just think that it's all childish that they're so mad with her over this. And Fallon out of all people, Toucan Sam out of all people sitting up here trying to talk talk about somebody being broke when Julie was paying for your shit. Bitch, sit your motherfucking ass down. I can't stand Fallon. Like, she has too much mouth. And not only does she have too much mouth, she does the most. And I just can't stand it, bitch. Like, I really can't. And she was talking so much. So everybody is pissed. So now when they get out, you know, when they get home, Andrea was talking to Zul Zuli about it. And Zuli was like, you know what I'm saying? She don't want to be a part of the drama when she's following the other girls. She's not really being neutral at all. She's following the other girls. But that's just my opinion, I guess. So... You know, Andrea and Rima get into an argument outside because Andrea was trying to speak how she felt about how everybody yelled at her about the $5 situation. I guess Andrea got fed up. I mean, not Andrea. I guess Rima got fed up with it. She got mad and trying to get booked and say she's the type of bitch that put bitches out the house. And Rima, when did you get hard? Because you have gotten your ass beat the most. Like, I haven't seen the bitch get their ass beat that much in Bad Girls Club history. Like, you've gotten your ass beat by Megan, 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 Ju uh, Erica, Christina. You done got your ass beat probably seven or eight times this whole season by three different people, by the three strongest people in the house. Like, I don't understand you, Rima. Like, I really don't get you. Like, you getting up in this bitch face talking about what you gonna do when you put bitches out. But, bitch, all the stronger bitches gone. You know, Erica gone. Christina gone. Megan gone. The strongest alpha females are out the house. So, all y'all bitches trying to pick on the next bitch that y'all think is weak. And, like I said, 
I don't think that Andrea is weak. Like, she had so much self-control when Rima was throwing this shit at her, at her face. You know what I'm saying? Like, that shows that she got some heart. Because she got self-control. Because if that was me, ain't damn bitch gonna be throwing no shit at me. Like, that's what I'm saying. So, I give kudos to Andrea for even having that self-control. Because I wouldn't be able to do it. Then, you know, Blunt gets in it. I got her back. I got her. Bitch, sit your fucking ADD ass down somewhere. Like, really? When did you start it, um, you know, trying to defend somebody? Rima was just doing your ass bad last week. And now, all of a sudden, you got her back against Andrea. Bitch, sit your ass down. I wish Andrea would have whooped your ass when, she put, when you pushed her in that fucking phone booth. I wish she would have whooped your ass. But she insulted your ass with the fat joke now everybody want to get mad so then Julie devises another plan to get to get rid of Andrea they take the phone they take all the toilet paper like some weak bitches and childish ass whores that they are and they leave Andrea is um hip to what they doing and it doesn't even bother her so she writes shit all over their picture and all of that. So then when they get home, he go filing. Oh, she's such a 12-year-old. Look at what she did. Bitch, how the fuck you gonna say somebody a damn 12-year-old and you sitting up here hiding tissue, taking phones out the house so a bitch can't use it? Like, who the fuck can you call 12, bitch? You've been 12, 11, and 10, and 9, 8, 7, and 6 since you've been in the damn house. So what the fuck is you saying? You the most childish bitch of them all. You're fake and you're a fucking follower and that's why I don't fucking like you. Then, when Andrea comes back to the house, Andrea is ready to scrap. Rima sits outside on the steps and she says, well, you know, I've been bullied in the house and even though your bullying has not been anything like mine, I'm not down for that and it's getting boring, so you might need to apologize to everybody. If I was Andrea, I wouldn't apologize to none of them bitches, especially considering the shit that's going to happen next week when them bitches finna jump on that girl. Like, they know Andrea already gonna whoop blinded ass, so when it come down to Julie, they know Julie gonna get her ass whooped. So Fallon gonna hold her arm and Rima gonna pull her by her hair and it still look like Andrea gonna get to that bitch. These bitches are something serious and I thought Las Vegas bitches was stupid. These bitches are really whack. Like, ever since season 7, they haven't been able to give us a real cast. Like, for real. That make me miss Shelly and Tasha and him. You know I couldn't stand him. Getting to R&B Divas. Um, Nikki obviously has um, issues with the producer. Like, my thing with Nikki is that, you know, when her... When she was in a studio, when they was in a studio with um with the producer, with it was her, Selena, and Monifa. They was writing the song, and then the guy was trying to um give Nikki pointers. And this is what I don't like about Nikki. Nikki is fucking bossy. Like, how the fuck you gonna be on the show called R and B Divas and this shit is centered around y'all doing a charity album and you don't want to sing? If you only on the show to promote your product, then your ass should have been on Real Housewives of Atlanta, like you tried to be. So I really don't get your logic. Like I don't. So what do you mean and then you know she obviously got issues she being bossy as fuck and that is what it is so her and some her Mo Monifa and Selena go out and, dis and discuss her struggles or whatever she have a conversation with them about it and then you know she's basically saying that she never written in groups and can't nobody tell a person how to write some people have their own writing pattern which is true as a writer I don't like writing in groups either so I can understand it part so then her and Faith meet up and they talk about it over Faith House and you know she's always getting offensive with people trying to give her pointers and shit like Nikki you already saying you don't have a passion so everybody that's trying to work with you is trying to give you the passion and give you some type of pointers to get yourself into the music so the album can be cohesive and all it is but you refuse to do that you know you got to be a dumb bitch about it like you ain't got to be bossy about it bitch seriously so then they meet up all the girls are, are together now and they meet up with the producer and there's more attention with Nikki and the producer and it's just going haywire and he's really trying to help her but she doesn't want any help from him you know what I'm saying so I just don't know what to say about Nikki like she's a bossy bitch um, they go on a road trip for Faith's concert. Kiki, you just had a baby like a week ago. Why the fuck is your loose cooch ass out on the road? Shouldn't you be at home? That's disgusting. But, yeah, so they go out on a road trip. Everybody having a good time. Everybody's together but Nikki. She ain't come. So once they get to D.C., Monifa surprises them with a drag queen show. All the drag queens come out and rent at them. Like, they did the one with the Faith Evans wig. They did the Kiki White Nothing in this World wig. They did the Monifa shit. They did the 
Nikki, they did everybody. So when they was at the drag queen show, of course Michelle, Michael, um, was very uncomfortable and what what really ticked me off with Michael is when Therese had sat next to him, he moving over and shit like <laughs> like she's a damn disease or something. Like if I was Therese, I would have read that motherfucking bitch for filth. Like you are that uncomfortable with homosexuality that you got to treat a motherfucker like they aren't even human because you got something against it. If those are your beliefs, that's fine, but why you got to be a bitch about it? Like, you straight up treated Therese like she wasn't shit. You know what I'm saying? I just didn't appreciate that. If that hadn't been me, I would have called your ass out. And that's why that drag queen kept fucking with your ass because he knew your ass was uncomfortable. And anytime a motherfucker is, is that uncomfortable with homosexuality, that means that they ass is is really battling their own sexual demons and that's what I believe. And if Kiki don't see that shit about Michelle, she really need to get her eyes checked. Then, you know, Kiki and Monifa, they acknowledge their closeness when they leave the drag show and they have a good time and Kiki tells everybody that she's going to therapy because Monifa says so. And they acknowledge the fact that they're getting close and they didn't think that they was going to bond the way they have and all of that and that was a sweet moment. Faith con concert comes around. Nikki finally shows up. Ain't nobody really thrilled to see Nikki because of her attitude and the way she's been acting. But all in all, Faith Evans did a wonderful job with the concert. She performed all of her hits and she sung her ass off. So it was a very good concert. R&B Divas is the shit. And I wish they was on BH1. But, you know, it, it is what it is, though. Uh, R&B Divas is the shit. And I'm going to review this week after week after week after motherfucking week. Because TV1 did the damn thing with this motherfucking show. Call them has been all you want to but they make great TV and, it's, and as a person that loves the ghetto hood red drama this is a good refreshing departure from it so I like it. So this was my review on Bad Girls Club and R&B Divas. Make sure you leave your comments below like, rate, and subscribe and tell all your friends to get their asses over here and subscribe to me and um, you know be on the lookout for my My Perspective video later this week. And I'm out of here, you guys, until probably, let me see. I think I should drop a Big Brother uh, video because I really haven't had the time. And, you know, with everything that happened last week, I really wasn't able to do it. So I think I should do that, too, um, since Big Brother coming on later on today. I should go ahead and do a Big Brother video, but it depends on how I feel. So I'm out of here, you guys. Peace.